for many Papua New Guineans, Sam Ekere Morauta will be remembered as the straight-shooting politician and the reformist prime minister whose work came to be appreciated more than a decade later. When I look back, I recall very clearly someone talking to me in 1979-80, Sir John Crawford, a famous Australian. He told me or made a statement saying that Papua New Guinea's stand standard of policy making and government public service was so high, quality was so good, so early in, the, in this nation's life. His challenge to me was, could those standards be sustained? Because possibly you couldn't better them. So the task of sustaining a nation with those qualities was going to be our challenge. When I look back now, I find he was right. Sam Makere Morota, who was a former Papua New Guinea Prime Minister, is widely credited with rescuing the country's economy during a period of significant financial crisis in the late 1990s and early 2000s. His leadership was marked by decisive reforms aimed at stabilizing and revitalizing Papua New Guinea's economy. Here's how he played a key role in this rescue. Number one, addressing the fiscal crisis from 1999 to 2002. When Sam Makere Morota took office as Prime Minister in July 1999, Papua New Guinea was facing severe economic challenges including ballooning public debt, dwindling foreign reserves, corruption in public institutions, and a weakening currency, which is the Kina. To stabilize the situation, he implemented strict fiscal policies aimed at cabin government overspending and improving revenue collection. He worked to restore macroeconomic stability by reducing deficits, controlling inflation, and halting the sharp decline in foreign reserves. Number two, restoring the independence of key institutions. Sam Makere Morota introduced reforms that sought to restore the independence and integrity of crucial public institutions that had been undermined by corruption and political interference, one of which is the Bank of Papua New Guinea. Sam Makere restored the central bank's independence, allowing it to make more robust measures to control inflation and stabilize the currency. Privatization Commission Sam Makere privatized several state-owned enterprises, such as PNGBC, which is the Papua New Guinea Banking Corporation, which was insolvent at the time. The sale of PNGBC to BSP was one of his administration's key achievements, helping to reduce the government's financial burden. Another one is public service reforms. His administration initiated reforms to reduce inefficiencies and corruption in the public sector, which has bloated and poorly managed. Number three, structural reforms. Sam Makere spearheaded a number of structural reforms to modernize Papua New Guinea's economy, one of which is privatization of state-owned enterprises. His government pursued a controversial but necessary agenda to privatize several failing state-owned enterprises, which helped to raise funds and reduce government liabilities. Public sector reforms. These reforms aim at improving governance, reducing corruption, and promoting efficiency in service delivery. Number four, partnership with international organizations. Sam McCurry recognized the need for external assistance, so he worked closely with international financial institutions such as the IMF and the World Bank. His government negotiated new loan agreements and implemented the reforms required to access this funding, which provided a crucial support to stabilize the economy and bolster foreign reserves. Number five, strengthening the KINA. Under Sam Makere's leadership, the depreciation of the KINA, Papua New Guinea's national currency, was brought under control. He ensured that monetary policies were tightened, interest rates were adjusted, and foreign reserves were replenished, restoring confidence in the currency. Number six, reforming the political system. Sam Makere also championed political reforms aimed at stabilizing governance and reducing political instability. These reforms included changes to the organic law on the integrity of political parties and candidates, designed to curb frequent changes in government and promote political stability, which was essential for long-term economic growth. Number seven, revitalizing mining and resource sector. Sam Makere's government also provided a more stable and transparent environment for the mining and resource sector which is crucial for Papua New Guinea's economy. His administration encouraged foreign investment in key projects, 
helping to boost revenues and foreign exchange reserves. So semiconductor Morata's leadership was instrumental in steering Papua New Guinea out of a dire economic crisis. His approach of fiscal discipline, institutional reforms, privatization and engagement with international financial institutions helped stabilize the economy, restore confidence in the country's governance and set foundation for future growth. While some of the reforms were politically controversial, their long-term benefits are widely acknowledged as having rescued Papua New Guinea from economic collapse today.